What up, gang? This is Ken Zerk, Ken Zelling, and Zika Milligan, the villain from the trilogy. We are back on Corpse Party Blood Drive. It looks like this is the last chapter. And it makes sense because we are pretty. We on some stuff. We saved Yuka, who was um possessed by the gremlin. Miss Kuan ate the gremlin's baby teeth and trapped it inside of her. Oh, I know for the last majority episodes, I've had this on. I'm actually, what you call it? My grandma parted my hair. My grandma parted my hair and got rubber bands on it. And, you know, at the next available time, I'm gonna get it braided. So y'all, I honestly, y'all, but y'all will probably see me with braided hair, like in Persona or something. Cause I've been, I've been playing this courts party, like back to back to back to back. Like it's literally been every day I record. I recorded like one or two chapters every single day. But you know, until I get my hair braided, I'ma just I'ma be recording with this. I'm honestly kind of glad I'm beating Corpse Party because I can like finally show some love to P5. I've been neglecting it, but let's be real. Corpse Party Blood Drive is way better than Persona 5. Come on, it's way better than Persona 5. It's better than all the Personas. And that is that opinion is like 100% biased, by the way. So don't like don't don't. Don't, don't get a cock up your ass because I said that. Chapter 10, reparations. Woo! Y'all don't understand how excited I am. Let me move my mic. All right. Okay, we got to get the core now. We're going to get the core. Aiko and I have progressed through heavenly hosts guided by the whims of the book. The school changing and shifting around us bit by bit. We were now faced with a peculiarly marked door. Well, let's go to this peculiarly marked door. It's way too quiet right now. Maybe I should take this opportunity to ask a few questions. Aiko, Miss Kuan's your sister, right? That's right. We heavenly host survivors really don't know her very well. Like we have no memory of her. Even though she's your teacher? Yeah, so... Could you tell me a little bit about Miss Kuan? What kind of person she is, for example? She's pretty much perfect. Calling her a genius wouldn't even begin to describe her. She's basically the living personification of the ultimate human ideal. Ideal, huh? See, it all started when her book became a worldwide bestseller, and she was only 11 years old. But her successes weren't just in literature. She also excels at science, math, theater, business, economics, not to mention research, publication, and management. The widespread success of PL Promotion Co. Inc. is all her doing. That only happened after she took over as CEO. My family, the Niwas, got rich beyond their wildest dreams through the royalties from her book sales. But it's also thanks to all that money that we've grown apart. My parents eschewed raising us in favor for using my sister's money to travel the world, an excursion from which they still have yet to return. Oh, I had no idea. You do still love your sister though, right? She certainly seems to love me, but I despise her. For as long as I can remember, everything, everything, everything I've ever done with my life has been on the rails, generously donated by her. She's never even given me a chance to choose my own destiny. All right. So Miss, so so either Miss Kuan and Aiko are dying this chapter. I'm I'm I'm, I'm predicting. Once she and I were at the mall shopping, looking to buy new underwear, there was an incident while I was trying on a new bra. I like this one. I think I'll take it. She just stuck her head into the dressing room through the curtain. And then, as if that weren't bad enough, she came right on in. No, no, no. Come on, I. If you don't coordinate your whole assemble, it'll be ruined. And don't try to tell me you're too young to concern yourself with such things. 
Age will pass you by and hold you down if you're not careful. You've heard the saying, right? That unpreparedness is one's greatest enemy? Well, this is your moment to show unpreparedness who's boss. Try this one. She left the dressing room only for a moment, but now handed me a luxurious, elegant, lacy bra from the gap between the curtains. This isn't... I complained, but I knew I'd eventually have to try it on anyway, so I just broke down and did it. See, it totally suits you. And it's my treat, so I hope you enjoy it. Oh, you're just so cute. You'll do anything I say, won't you? Well, you are a good girl, so you understand that my suggestions are for the best, right? That's, yeah, that seems that seems very annoying. Kuan's smile was so pure and sweet it was almost scary. That seems very aggravating. She has all the privileges. She has all the privilege and the pleasures of life. Plus, our parents love to boot. Everything goes to her and nothing comes to me. She had me in a pretty dark place for a while, in fact. But right when things were looking the darkest, I came to discover the existence of spirit items and I was instantly hooked. One thing led to another and before I knew it, I'd become a certifiable occult nerd nut. You can't even imagine how excited I was when I learned that I had spiritual power and my sister didn't. This is my world. It's a source of strength that I came upon fair and square. My spirit item auction sales hit some pretty extravagant numbers too, which I certainly helped. But then she did it again. She managed to get a foothold in this field too, and instantly become a bigger name than I was. It really pisses me off. I had no idea. She certainly does seem larger than life. Well, you know, in all honesty, I don't really know her all that well myself. Righteous is taken to extremes can become a form of evil all in its own. And when evil gets pure enough, it can be a person's salvation. You see this in every last corner of the world. The answer to everything under the sun isn't always the right answer, you know what I mean? I actually don't understand that, and I'm really curious to know what she means by that. Because that is a very interesting philosophy. These tremors certainly are getting intense, aren't they? The school is probably starting to break down. Do you think it's the seventh pillar? It has awakened. <laughs> Who's there? It's the book. The Book of Shadows is talking. The Nirvana has awakened. The Nirvana? You mean the core? The souls of the witches? It can sense our approach. The Pillar 2 reacts to the Nirvana. Inumaru? Is it Inumaru? Aiko, where are you going? This sensation, I recognize it. I was right, Haruyuki. Is it really you, Haruyuki? Thank goodness. I thought I... Yeah, don't like just calm down with the sentiments. He's killing you. You know, Mara had been completely taken over by the darkening. His hatred transforming him into a feral beast. His mouth was now split slit on both ends, giving him a disturbing, almost fox-like appearance. With speed and precision, he beeline right for Aiko's neck and bit deeply into it with obvious intent to kill. I'm sorry for running away. I stole that smiles of yours, so go ahead, kill me. Hey, Book of Shadows! Bite his cock off! I caught up to the two figures where I found one seemingly trying to eat the other. I'll save you! But I can't run any- no, evil spirit, let go of her! 
I brandished the book of shadows in front of me like a shield attempting to intimidate the attacker. If you don't, I will destroy you. It's okay. I can finally be with everyone else. What? Wait, hold on. Who is that? Out of the blue, a girl I'd never seen before now stood in the creature's path. She was wearing uniquely designed green pins in her hair. Looking more closely, her body had a slight sheen to it and was partly translucent. You stupid dog! What do you think you're doing? The rampaging Inumaru showed no signs of having comprehended Sayaka's words. Did you really come here looking for me? I mean, do you even have a brain in that blockhead of yours? You're such an idiot. You should know better, you dumb mutt. Now she seems to have gotten through to him. He stopped biting down on Aiko, releasing his grip ever so slightly. You really are just a pathetic mongrel. How could you let yourself turn into something like that? Saika's tone had a slight waver to it, belying her harshness. But her berating of Inumara was working. His eyes were beginning to well up with tears. How do you not understand that you have a perfectly suitable girl here already? Am I speaking with an accent or something? Damn boneheaded pooch! He was full on bawling now, and nothing seemed like it could slow his tears. You're just such a dumbass! It's no one's fault, you know? No one could have known this would happen, so don't blame Aiko, okay? You understand? She was less reassuring him and more commanding him. Inumara released Aiko from his mouth entirely and began very quiet. Good boy, Inumaru. Aiko, I'm gonna take this dot with me. But where, whenever your time comes to a close, we'll meet. Let's all meet up again, okay? Aiko's face was glazed over with tears as Inumaru's, not as Inumaru's. She nodded, unable to even raise her head. I'm sorry. Thank you, Sayaka and Haruyuki. Man, they really, they moved on. With one final soft, serene flash of light, Saika and Inumaru both dissipated into the air and were gone from sight. Bars. Aiko. I'm sorry. That was very unlike me. Oh yeah, Miss Kuwan's on the cover. Something's gonna happen to one of them. That made me jump a little bit. The sound of a monstrous explosion rang out, accompanied by a violent quake that rocked the very foundation of the school. This earthquake had triggered an unfortunate side effect. The hole connected to the underground passages had been completely sealed off. This meant Mochita and the others had no choice but to find another way out. Where are we? Which part of Heavenly Host is this? That's a very good question. Maybe it would be best if we stopped trying to put everything into the contents of the old Heavenly Host. Either way, the only choice we got is to climb these stairs, so let's get moving. Where's Naomi? Where's Naomi? Where's Naomi? Where's Naomi? Wait, there was just a body up here. What happened to it? I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. We made it to escape through the hole before it collapsed and wend our way through the numerous passages, finally arriving at the base of the enormous bell tower. Oh, there's Ayumi. As soon as we got there, however, there was another huge explosion that the whole school rocked beneath our feet. 
I was certain class rep and Ico must have felt the blast too and could only hope beyond hope beyond hope that they were both all right. Monster's explosions continued to echo through the bell tower repeatedly and violent tumors shook us again and again seemingly without end. No, no. The hell? No, no. The seventh pillar, no, no. it's a light. The Sephiroth of Knowledge was indeed lit up, spewing against the squid and green flames every which way. Ai, Shinazaki! Let's go! Naomi. I'll carry you, Naomi, come on! Oh, she wasn't showing up because she was, um... Because Satoshi was helping her. About time you showed up! The Sephiroth of Knowledge wasn't the only thing to be found at the top of the tower. They are waiting for us on the landing with Magari Mizuki holding Satsuki Mizuharu by the neck. What? You! She let go of Satsuki who tumbled to the ground like a rag doll. <gasps> She's alive but only just. That's why I brought her along. Aiko and Ayumi have gone ahead to the core of the Nirvana. What? This world doesn't exactly follow the rules of human logic and intellect, see? The Sephiroth of Knowledge is reacting to the Nirvana's awakening. The school's only got a few other few minutes at best. If you don't want to get crushed, you should probably use your effort after stone to get the fuck out of here. What about you? The gremlin broke mine. Magari flashed a bitter smile and showed off the rubble that was once a pair of Ever After Stones. She seemed almost proud of what she'd been through. Ms. Kuan then produced her custom-made PL promotion stones, which had also seen better days. They were full of cracks with a strange blue gas seeping out of here and seeping out here and there. Same here, I'm afraid. Rather than gaining spiritual energy, mine are losing it as we speak. You serious? <laughs> Guess we're all destined to die here then, huh? This sucks ass. I wonder if Waldo's worried about me. Magari scratched her head and looked for all the world like she'd resigned herself to her fate. It was a sight entirely unlike her. There wasn't anything we could do at this point but stand there and helplessly watch the pillar pulsate, knowing that it could blow at any moment. And it was then, when we'd all resigned ourselves to our fates as Magari did, that Miss Kuan suddenly looked down at her wristwatch and spoke. Satoshi. Satoshi. Was I a good teacher? In your world? Excuse me? Nakashima said her name once, I think. Miss Yui, was it? Yeah. Why? How do you know about our world? Misuto mentioned this before, didn't he? About how you can tell a lot from the color of a person's aura. And I could tell right away that you were from a different time, a different past. Well, Miss Yui was funny, kind of ditzy, and the best teacher we ever had, really. But in a lot of ways, you're exactly the same as her, Miss Kuo. You're kind and fun. I love you too, Miss Kuan. I was still straddling Satoshi's back and could barely form a coherent sentence, but I somehow knew if I would ever say it, that now would be the time. <laughs> Miss Kuan smiled brightly. I, s I have a lot of regrets, but what you said just now makes them all seem insignificant. Those words are my saving grace. Even a self-proclaimed genius like you can get all sentimental from time to time, eh? 
I can make fast calculations, and I know a whole storehouse of information. But that just means I have a normal brain, nothing more. There's certainly nothing genius about it. Are you so fascinated, for example, by someone who's able to see precisely how much time she has left in this existence? Ms. Kuan turned her wristwatch so everyone could see it. The counter displayed the number 300, and it was counting down second by second. That watch... It's my life clock. I didn't want to waste a single second I had, you see? Life clock. A device capable of reading and displaying one's own lifespan. Ordinarily, I wouldn't put any stock in the accuracy of such a ridiculous sonic contraption. But this was Miss Kuan we were talking about. Thinking back to everything she'd accomplished in, such a sh in the short amount of time we knew her, and all the technology she devised through PL, I couldn't help but believe every word she'd said. No matter how preposterous those words may have been, no matter how much I wish them to be fabrications. So you shared your abilities with the world simply because people demanded it. And in doing so, you shaved years off your life. I heard your body had aged up to about 90 and you were close to the end. Guess I heard right. Ms. Kuan smiled and slowly walked over to the pillar. I'm going to destroy this pillar. Everyone stand back. She'd had the baby tooth from Sachi in her other hand, from the gremlin in her hand. With this child's spirit energy, I can do it. According to my calculations, it should work. Always remember, your lives will go on with or without me. No matter the hardships, don't ever give up. Stay safe, everyone. I screamed and I cried. I lashed out. This wasn't right. This shouldn't have been the end for her. Nakashima, the Hodge Princess Satoshi's house can heal the body and mind alike. You should take a dip. You, you should take a dip with Yuka again sometime. In Kishinuma, make sure you take your quiz. I spoke with Mr. Yamazaki about it. Come now, you two. Boys shouldn't cry. You need to hurry. Now that this pillar or I have much time left. Damn. Still on Satoshi's back as he descended the stairs. I screamed. There had to be another way. There had to be. Megara was the only one left who hadn't said anything yet. I won't forget you. There aren't many geniuses like you in the world. And the Martubas will withdraw from spiritual medicine. You have my word. I trust you'll keep it. Also, I'll look after Aiko. And with that, Megari followed us down the stairs, away from the pillar. Once Miss Kuan had confirmed we were all out of range, she pressed her hand and the gremlin's tooth upon the monolith. <laughs> she suddenly began, began to breathe heavier, as if she were running out of air. Her years were practically catching up to her all at once. She began to feel as, her old, old, as, her old, as old as her body appeared. She looked down at her watch. There was only 20 seconds left. I really don't want to die. No! She's just like Miss Yui. It's, like, um, it's making me remember that one wrong again. When Miss Yui, after Miss Yui was trapped under the rubble and she was just crying. Oh, man. I don't want to die. With nothing left to hold them back, the tears began to stream down Miss Kuan's face. The counter was down to 10. Ms. Kuan's arm began to fuse with the pillar as if she were being sucked in. So, I guess the fact I don't want to die means I lived a truly happy life. Oh, 
Oh man, I'm such a bitch. The upper portion of the bell tower lit up with a blinding flash and exploded with tremendous force. <laughs> oh man, I'm such a bitch, I'm such a bitch. The entire school shook harder than ever. Each of us was blown clean off the stairs and knocked unconscious in the process. A piece of heavenly host blew out, leaving an enormous crater in its wake. A dimension of empty expanse, bright and white. A world without a single sound. There I stood, dumbfounded. I couldn't speak. Where am I is what I wanted to say. What's the Toshi now? It's like a miracle that I'm able to see you here. I was staring at my watch, thinking about how I wasn't afraid of dying. I lived my life knowing that when my lifespan ended, that would be it. I accepted my fate and resolved to do what needed to be done with the limited time I had. But then I met you and I fell in love for the first time. And when I stopped to think about how much I wanted to live, the counter stopped. Don't start, don't, don't do this Disney Channel shit. Love truly is many splendored. Even though you came from a different world and probably don't remember the day we met, we're still connected. I wonder if you'll find yet another teacher in my place once you return to the real world. I'll be kind of jealous, but do say hi for me. To the one who isn't me, won't you? To the me who isn't me, won't you? Bye bye now. Man. You can't count on Chorus Party for no Disney Channel shit, bro, I swear. That's not really a bad thing, no. It's sad, but it's not bad. We love a good story. My face was coated in tears and snot. I stood up, arm outstretched, but there was nothing I could do. She was gone. Where am I? Are you okay, Ayumi? Yeah, but that earthquake was incredible. Come on, we have to hurry. She's just stepping on glass, ain't she? Oh my goodness, that ugly little eyeball. Damn, Miss Kuan. Oh, they're playing with me, man. Okay. Duh, y'all need to fucking chill out. Hot damn. This is so fucking stupid, bro. Talisman. Okay, we got a talisman. Last ball. Oh, we got a key. I did not think that was going to happen. What the freak? I'm glad I didn't like, because I was thinking I had to kill that other spirit with the talisman. That's what I was thinking. So I'm glad I like checked up on that first or else I would have been out of luck. It's a cabinet designed for one object. Glass ball. Suddenly the door across the way seemed to have a different air about it. An entirely more menacing presence. 
Now, how do I get there? That's the question. I don't know. I'm going to try it. Okay. There we go. That's what we needed. Right here. Oh. Excuse you. Uh, excuse you. Oh, sniffer makes sniffers a lot. All right, there. All right, let's get up in here. What's in here for us? Oh. No, but actually, how did that even hit? I'm so dead serious when I ask, how did that hit? That should not have touched me. Matter of fact, that didn't touch me. What? Okay, once again, I don't understand how that hit. All right. Don't bother. I want to get these name tags. There was a single white door in the back of the crystal filled room, along with an enormous red standing cross. The walls were lined up with the crucified corpses of what looked to be the Martuba investigation team sent before us. It is ahead. The Book of Shadows spoke once again. We made it. Aiko, please turn back. You're certainly persistent. Please, I mean it. If you don't, there's a good chance you're going to get in my way. Aiko was at a loss for words. I'm sorry. I draped my head down and apologized for, my, for the sudden outburst. I had intended to be looking out for Aiko, manufacturing an excuse to keep her out of harm's way, but it came across harshly. Don't go in yet. It worked, however. Aiko hung back and I stepped through the door on my own. Hold on, go back for a second. I wanted to... Inside was another realm entirely. One in which heaven and earth alike sat in ruins. The sky was a twisted coil of red and black and the ground, or what was left of it, was little more than a black mass. The floorboards from the school stretched before me converging at a shining staircase leading up to the unknown. And high above all else loomed a conspicuous object shining brightest of all. Is that the Nirvana? <gasps> On another mass of floorboards below me were Kishinuma, Mochida, Nakashima, and Magari. Yuka and Satsuki were there too, but they were both clearly unconscious. Are you all right, Shinazaki? What is that? I cracked a smile at Mochita's panicked reaction. Just stay alive, you guys. I'm gonna go settle things. Shinazaki, you're not seriously planning on... So only the bearer of the book can go on ahead, huh? Don't you go dying on me now. My mind was made up. I was gonna do this no matter what. I took my first step up the staircase. Wait. Hey, Shinazaki, wait! Shinazaki. Nakashima addressed me with much effort and she still seemed to be in a tremendous pain. It was admittedly some comfort to receive so much support from my friends. The stairs faded behind me, quite literally, each one vanishing as soon as I stepped off of it, actively rejecting the notion that anyone but the bearer of the book could be here. I continued climbing to light the top, 
which left me right at the foot of the shining object in the sky. From here on up is... The last of the stuff disappeared, leaving me floating in midair. I clasped my arms around the Book of Shadows. Compose yourself. Regain your balance. Okay. I tucked the book under my arm and began and started leveling myself out, one, out a bit. Almost immediately, my vision began to blur. It looked like the world around me was melting. It took me a moment to realize that it was actually motion blur due to the extreme rate of speed at which I was flying. The shining object was getting closer and closer. I'm really scared, but I'm not going to lose this. I've done a lot of hesitating. A lot of running away and a lot of regretting up till now. And I've always just crawled into my shell when everything's got too intense. Convincing myself that I was unimportant in the overall scheme of things. But now I realize that I'm walking a different road entirely and I've made up my mind. Watch me, sis. My eyes are open now and I'm never closing them again. What the hell? The following events all happened in rapid succession. The runic letters on my thigh from the blowback in Yoshi Shinazaki's estate began glowing red and spurting blood. As I was observing and confirming this, four small blue lights were drawn to me like moths to a flame. Once they got within arm's length, they stopped moving and just hovered. What are they? I had a feeling I already knew the answer. These four lights were giving off a gentle, caring, friendly glow. They were the purest and strongest lights I'd encountered here. I felt more reassured than ever just looking at them. Money. What are you? In my mind, I could understand them without the need for words. Their aura was as inviting as could be. It's you guys, isn't it? Oh! Seiko, Mayu, Morishigi, and Miss Yui! I began to cry. This was no time to lament or mourn, though. The runic letters on my arm, arm now began glowing red and spurning blood, just as the ones on my thigh I um, had moments before. What the? Fight it. It's the Nirvana. The Book of Shadows spoke again. Fight it. If you die here, you lose your right to bear me. Unbind me and master the dark magic. When the Nirvana addresses you in Futhark, you may answer back by pressing the quick time buttons to use Futhark lettering of your own as indicated. Okay, so A I think is square. I think B is Y. Ah, oh, which one is B? I think B is circle and C is Y. I don't understand this. What am I doing? I don't understand. I don't get this. How am I supposed to know what the price? There's no way they just expect me to know runic fucking letters, bro. There's no way they expect me to just know that. 
I don't really know what I'm doing, honestly. I, I, there must, I think there was something earlier that I was supposed to look at that I never like came across or that I might didn't click on. So I, I just don't really know what I'm doing. So I'm gonna try and do this on guesswork one more time. And then after that, I'm just gonna look it up. Um, let's say that. I was going for the bottom left. I don't. Oh my goodness, I'm, I'm terrible. I'm terrible, I'm terrible. Oh snap, I suddenly realized my vision had gone completely dark. I... I turned around at the sound of Suzumoto's voice and there she was, Mayu Suzumoto with a warm blue glow. <laughs> We've been watching over you the whole time. Shinohara Morishige and Miss Yui were there too. You guys, what's going on? Is this a dream? You've done so great, Ayumi. It brought tears to my eyes to see you pick yourself back up over and over again, never throwing in the towel. But isn't it about that time now? Are you all alive? Shinohara shook her head. See? The marks on, their ne on her neck from the noose that had killed her was still present and accounted for. We may not be alive, but we're all here. So we thought we'd pop in for a visit. This is black magic that allows someone to spend eternity with the dearly departed here. The land of the corpses. Even Yoshe couldn't successfully cast that. You know, I might even be able to hold class here. I never thought I'd actually be able to cast such high level spell. Well, as long as I'm here. <laughs> and then you know what Kishinuma did? Isn't it the funniest thing you've ever heard? In a dark room, I was surrounded by skeletal corpses. I stood and spoke with my friends. I was happy and content and lost myself to this sensation of camaraderie I had so missed. The morning never came. It was perpetual night here. And I, but I barely even noticed. I was so ready for this, for this eternal existence with my dear departed friends. That's an interesting wrong end. Why didn't y'all make it to where I had to check it? Or something like that. Why would you make it optional? If it was, if it was gonna be necessary for the final boss. All right, I got the right, I got the answers on my phone. My main issue is that I don't really know what button is which one is a b and c so i kind of have to guess r m okay so i'm guessing that's supposed to be this button yep yeah, okay i got it up is is, is circle DM. Up is circle. Up is circle. Okay. HF. Okay, so I'm guessing that's triangle. That should be square then. Okay, left is triangle. Right is square. Up is circle. DMM. Yes, let's go. Who even are you? I awoke to a white expanse stretched out before me and realized I was still in midair. It almost seemed like I was above the clouds looking down on the water below. What is that? 
Finally, the life in the Book of Shadows faded, its power spent. I immediately lost my balance and fell through the sea of clouds, landing with a thump. Before me, I saw a young blonde girl sitting in the nude. The entire area was so blindingly bright, though, that I couldn't make out who she was. The clouds clung to the ground even here, giving my surroundings an unearthly glow, pure white as if they were in the aftermath of a blizzard. I could make out new details the longer I focused, and now notice the girl sitting before me had almost translucent eyes, translucent blue eyes with no eyebrows. She was gazing fixedly, fixedly at me. I could only think of this as someone being as someone who existed beyond all human knowledge. Do you not eat, bitch? Are you the will of the Nirvana? I addressed her with a fearful break in my voice, but she just continued staring at me in total silence. Return to this book! I raised the book of shadows, but the girl's expression did not change. As a descendant of the one who summoned you initially, I'd like to apologize, all right? Hey, look, I, I'd like to apologize, all right? Look, I, I understand, you was napping, you was just peacefully napping, peacefully sleeping, you know, weren't you? Papa Voss intellect repotest. The girl smoked, but I didn't know what the hell she was talking about. I wonder what language that is. Sakyam Quipe Arat and Flama Infernalis. Sant Om Sant Omnia Viscera as a just configurator. Hold on, I'm about to Google translate this right quick. Because what I'm not about to do is uh, what I'm not about to be doing is chanting some evil ritual, and then have fucking Cthulhu pull up on my shit. Are all his entrails vanished? Are all his guts screwed up? It's Latin. Oh hell no, nah, it's Latin. Y'all really trying to make me summon demons? Yo, put some clothes on. The girl stood up and began approaching me. I tried to take a step back, but tripped and fell. This is when I first noticed my surroundings. The cloud had receded a bit, revealing no snow broth, but a thick forest of half deep dead trees. The girl approached me slowly, one, at a, one step at a time in an almost rhythmically manner, rhythmical manner. Hey, queen, come on. Her mouth opened wide. You, don't, don't throw up on me! Oh. She might, I, I'm a, I, is she like the first Shinazaki or something? Like the very first Shinazaki? The one who, or, or like one of the ones who created the Book of Shadows? And a large branch suddenly popped out from the back of her throat. Suddenly she was crucified directly in front of me. Blood splattered everywhere. I was completely drenched. Or maybe she was the vessel used to create the Nirvana. That's probably what it is. The sacrifice. I screamed and tried to move back, but my legs had given out. Meanwhile, the Book of Shadows lay on the ground. It was the farthest thing from my mind at the moment. Then from behind the skewered girl, I caught sight of another girl who looked just like her, flaming body hanging in the air. It swung very slightly in pace, creaking and groaning with every re with each revolution. I could hear accusatory yells in that same foreign language coming from hysterical men and women in the forest. What is going on? Okay! I shifted my focus from the burning Hane girl to the tree. On the tree, back to the girl in front of me, and she too now is completely burned. <laughs> I'd offer you a hug, but you're, you might want to take a shower first. I don't want to get your dirty on me. She continued walking towards me little by little, step by painful, deliberate step. And when she finally reached me, she put her hands around my neck and began to choke me. Okay. Can you not? Thinking quickly, however, I grabbed the girl's arm and pulled her in and gave her the biggest hug I could muster. Oh, what a sweetheart. I may not understand your words, but your message comes across loud and clear. 
That scream of agony speaks of a life that was violently cut short. I don't know what exactly happened to you, but I know someone else whose story is probably similar to yours. Did the, the burned girl stop moving entirely? I guess I'd gotten her attention. She was always so sad, and even after her life was taken, she still loved her mother dearly. But nobody ever forgave her. She suffered and suffered, and though all she wanted was for someone to help her, she wound up losing herself, eventually drowning under the weight of her curse. My eyes began to overflow with tears. I loosened my grip slightly and the burned girl began to stroke my cheek delicately yet strangely. You're right to feel the hatred and rage you do, but... This never-ending chain of sorrow needs to be broken by someone. And it may not be an enviable job, but that duty falls upon you. She continued to stroke my cheek, but then raised her other hand to my eye. Out of, stuck out her finger and jammed it right into my eye socket. Pain shot through me in one incredible wave. From somewhere deep within my head, I could hear the sound of a foreign body digging around my muscle tissue. Her eye had directly cut into my ophthalmic nerve. Between the intense agony and deeply disturbing sound, I felt like I was on the verge of insanity. This must be the same pain this girl is feeling. If I can't understand what she went through, I'll never understand her. I won't run away. That I decided. I allowed my body to give in to the convulsions that had begun racking it. I was trying not to consciously focus on the pain instead of focusing on the girl. I felt as if I was mere moments away from choking on my own tongue when the girl's finger finally dug out my dug my right eye out of its socket completely. Words cannot describe the intense pain. Cramped up completely, I began shivering. The girl then put the sticky, bloody eyeball into her palm, displaying it triumphantly in view of my other eye for a moment before squeezing it with every ounce of strength she had. Yucky. It still had some elect elasticity to it, so it expanded in her hand until its length had abruptly doubled. But I could only take so much, eventually exploding into a... It could only take so much, eventually exploding into white, milky, milky white and red goo. Yet I still refused to show any signs of intimidation. I did not react. I waited until the girl's eyes met with mine and flashed her a soft smile. She looked genuinely puzzled. And then she threw herself at me and our lips met. What the f- I hugged her once more in spite of my trembling arms. A huge shockwave shook the air transforming into light and shattering around me. <gasps> no, please, no. I could hear Kishinuma and the others yelling out in shock, having witnessed everything from the bottom of the stairs. Aiko was there too. When the lights settled, I was standing at the top of those mystic red stairs, which I now reformed and stretched down below me to the remnants of Heavenly Host. I held my gourd out right eye socket in my hand and the book of shadows in my left. I slowly, solemnly descended those stairs of light. Guys! You're okay! Your eye! You're injured. I'm alright. It's a small price to pay for helping that girl move on. The Book of Shadows in my hand had a white sheen to it now. I gave a weak smile and slowly formulated in my mind the exact words I wanted to say. I'm sorry, everyone. I know if I put you through a horrible mess, and no matter how many times I apologize, I know it'll never be enough. What I did is unforgivable. But I won't let you guys get hurt anymore. I'll protect you from here in this. I'll protect you from here in this Nirvana. What? 
What are you saying? Did something happen, Shinazaki? This doesn't seem like you. Don't worry, I'm okay. I've just resolved to protect the people I hold dear. For real this time. Hey, Shinazaki. Kishinuma seemed especially protruded by this resolution. He must have thought I was on the verge of sacrificing myself for the greater good or something, and rightly so. I thought so too! But the section of the floor where I stood was up too high for Kishinuma and the others to reach me. They couldn't stop me, not anymore. Shinozaki. I'm a descendant of the Shinazaki family too. So just like Sachiko, I'm gonna swallow this Nirvana and seal it away. Like Sachiko, you can't possibly know. I'd have been too embarrassed to look my friends in the eyes for while informing them of this, but knew I had to now. It was my last chance and I looked up at them, cheeks a little red. I guess this is goodbye. I giggled as playfully as I could. <gasps> enough with this bullshit, Shinazaki! You've been through enough already, don't do this! Kishinuma was downright hysterical, but I still kept the same bright smile on my face. I wouldn't let go of it no matter what. It's not all bad, you know? I saw in Yoshe's memories. Before Heavenly Host was made, when Sachiko sealed away the Nirvana, the person it was created for, whose existence had been erased, I was able to get it back. His existence, you mean? I might be able to do the same for Shinohara and Susumoto, Morishigi and Miss Yui. I might be able to at least put everyone's memories of them back where they belong. I'm happy. I'll have to say goodbye, but at least I'll still remain in everyone's thoughts. I still exist. And that's a pretty good deal in the end. It's just much too sad of fate to be erased by the Nirvana. Shinohara, Suzumoto, Morishiki, and Miss Yui. Is this really what you want? You need to stop thinking about other people and start thinking about yourself for a change. My facade had finally cracked. A single tear rolled down my cheek, then another and another. And with impeccable timing, the Book of Shadows spoke, striking me while I was down. Unfortunately, there's no saving you. Controlling such dark magic requires equal compensation. Your spirit energy is no match for Sachiko's, so your very existence itself will be taken as payment. The hell? Those who come into direct contact with the Nirvana must accept the consequences of their actions. Those who alter the fabric of existence doubly so. All memories of you will be forfeit. You will be remembered by none. Everything connected to your identity will be excised from reality. Choose wisely. Hey, this is no joke. You won't exist anymore. Choosing that for yourself willingly is just asinine. For a split second, I let my true feelings show, but then immediately forced a smile again. But if everyone's lives can go back to normal, so fucking what? You don't get it at all. You need to stop the Shinazaki. Isn't there any other way? Yeah, class rep. We don't want to lose you or anyone else. I'm through with people vanishing from my life, so please just stop. Don't do this. Black magic does come with a price, but even I don't want a future without you. I absolutely cannot agree to this course of action. Thank you all for your kind words. But this is something somebody has to do, and that somebody's going to be me. You could always keep the Nirvana intact and remain as its jailer instead. Are you certain you've chosen the, the path you've chosen is the one you wish to walk? I won't leave this problem for the next generation to deal with. That just wouldn't be right, it wouldn't. Not then I shall accompany you.
But can a normal human like yourself truly succumb this expanded nirvana? I just have to swallow it all, right? I can handle that. I shaved a piece of flesh from the wall of heavenly host, fully prepared to illustrate this point. Without thinking too hard about what I was doing and ignoring every impulse in my body, I shoved the fatigued meat in my mouth, chewed and gulped it down. My face was warped in horror as I felt the morsel slide its way down my throat. I may as well have swallowed fire. It somehow triggered my back to pop open slightly and began spurting blood. Bits of flesh I was unable to stomach were then quickly and rather ungracefully regurgitated onto the floor. Everybody, get out! Hurry! There's a hole leading back to the real world at the school's entryway! I then picked up the flesh I spit out and tried to cram it back in my mouth. I was determined to keep it down. It would have been a lot easier for me if, I, if, if it hadn't been glaring at me from my hands, however. Wait, stop! Just stop! I turned to face Kishinuma, who was practically begging me not to go through with this. It's not like I wanted to. I just had to. Stop this, please. We don't want you to disappear from our lives. Not without a fight. I smiled. The sentiment was truly heartwarming. You all, all you always did look out for me. Don't think I didn't notice. Even if you forget I exist, I'll never forget you, Kishinuma. Kishinuma's eyes welled up with tears. When you patted me on the head, it made me feel really happy. I smiled again, even while tears were streaming down my face. This time after swallowing the wall meat, blood began spurting from my head. Yet finally, my actions seemed to be having an effect as the wall in front of me began to fizzle away into a blood red mist ultimately vanishing before my eyes. Stop! Stop doing that! Damn it all! Kishinuma collapsed to his knees. Another shockwave rocked the whole dimension. It was so enormous that the ceiling fell in and a nearby wall began to crack. Whatever rickety parts of the school were left had begun crumbling around us. You're really something, Ayumi Shinazaki. Let's get out of here while we still can. Come on, get up! Do you want a death to be in vain? Tell how we can stop her either way, not from here. Let's get her to do what she feels she has to. She's the successor to Sachiko's bloodline. It's her right. I'll never forget you, Shinazaki, no matter what. Huh? Big, big, bro big brother? And Satsuki, you're okay? Yeah, though Satsuki's still out cold. Get your asses moving! Do you want to be eaten alive alongside the Nirvana? I'll leave you behind if I have to. Yoshiki, let's go. Before he left the area, Kishinuma looked back one last time. But I was on his side by that point. <laughs> we carefully but swiftly made our way through the rubble of the former bell tower. Along the way, Yoshiki paused for a moment to look up at the stairs and caught a glimpse of Mishito's clothes. <laughs> Those are... So he died too, huh? It was only a moment's distraction, however. Yoshiki, like the rest of us, very quickly continued on his way. You got it's just a little farther, we can make it. But we have to hurry. Yoshiki got to follow, but got up to follow, but instead he just stood there. He wouldn't take a single step. 
Kishinuma, what's wrong? Naomi's still on my back, saw Yoshiki motionless from motionless form, and she knew something wasn't quite right. Is she just gonna be erased from all of our minds? What's gonna happen when she eats a Nirvana? Will the world actually be able to go back to normal? He seemed to be caught in a loop of doubt. He was trying to work through something in his head, and it didn't and didn't seem ready to move until he succeeded. Yoshiki, what are you doing? We don't hurry. Right now she's in there. She's inside the Nirvana. Yoshiki, wait! He turned back toward the ruins of Heavenly Host and run off. You guys get the hell out of here! And just like that, he was gone. Fallen rubble blocking us off from the passage where he darted into. No! Yoshiki? <laughs> Try as we might, there was no pursuing him. He made his choice and there was nothing we could do to change things now. We have no choice, we have to go now! The school began to shake even more violently. <gasps> Yoshiki, Shinazaki! Not only was it shaking but creaking and groaning as well. The school was definitely not going to stay intact for much longer at all. The red and black sky began to get sucked in the heavenly host, like smoke into an exhaust vent, with the beautiful, clear night scenery of the real world peeking out from behind it. And slowly, the blue sky of day crept into view, austing both the moon and the horrors of the Nirvana alike. The six pillars disappeared from the earth, leaving only giant craters in their wake. The rising sun shone upon the death-ridden world, serving as a beacon of light and hope for the people who suffered beneath what could have been, and for a time was, an endless night. In a place that exists outside of this world, a curse built upon darkness and sorrow swept through like a river overflowing its banks into the valley below. But the flood was damned through the blood sacrifice of a truly benevolent girl, whose very existence was lost in the process. The fate to die cannot be overturned. <laughs> but the former existence of your sadly departed friends has been restored to this reality. Their memories, their achievements. From that, however, a new sorrow floods the world, and the healing process begins anew. The baton of guardian has been passed from one generation to the next. And somewhere in this world, I'm certain she must still bear it, protecting us all deep under cover of night. <laughs> She's been erased from my memories, however. So wherever she is, there can no, never truly be any communication between us again. But in a future where countless worlds and fates have merged, Naomi, Naomi food's ready. Hi. Coming! With a sigh of relief, Nakashima stood up and left the room. Next to a photo of her classmates, another photo stood on her desk. Taking up Moshida's house. I'm certain we'll see her again. Hold the pride of the protector of power in your heart. Oh. Oh.
Oh, that song bang, that song bang. <sighs> Let these crackers rock. It's solid. I guess I'll just take this time to talk. Man, courts party. I remember the first time I ever saw Course Party. I was it was it was the first week of quarantine, right? I was watching that man Berlizzi play it. And I never watched Berlizzi like that. You know, I always loved him. He was always one of my favorites, but he was just never somebody I watched a lot, you feel me? But I just I saw Berlizzi, I saw Courts Party. I was like, I wonder what this is. So I just clicked on it, man. And I promise you. I stayed up that I, I binged that entire series, no sleep, no nothing. I binged that entire series to the point by the time of the end, the final episode, I barely even like, I, I was so out of it that I was so out of it, but I was so locked in at the same time. I fell in and here I sat in my own house and he know his room in the corner in a wheelchair, expressionless and empty. With the book of shadows in my lap. There was no fire in my eyes, no life. I just sat and stared at a single point in front of me. Book of shadows can use, make everyone happy. The reflection staring back from the mirror wasn't me. It was the gremlin, the girl in black. The gremlin's eyes were covered by her bangs. Her expression was impossible to read. She was unmoving, unreadable, untenable. Just a reflection, a reflection of me. We'll protect everyone best as I, even if it's by myself. The book of shadows in my hand darted its eyes around frantically, its tongue dangling limply outside the frame of the tome itself. The house sat in silence for a moment. And then the doorbell rang again. The reflection in the mirror was no longer the gremlin. It was just Ayumi. Just me. The book of shadows reverted too, showing itself once more as a plain, ordinary, entirely standard leather-bound book. The blue-white stones were tossed into the air, where they danced for a bit before tumbling back down. I could easily catch them with one hand. Yoshiki. I looked up at the white house in front of me and smiled a toothy grin, and I held on to those stones tightly, for they were my precious ever after stones. Finally, I found it.
all right back to what i was saying i still i remember um i watched belize play i was so like out of it because i was binge because his episodes were like hour two hour long episodes of each chapter because he was like bro barely ever edited like out the actual wandering arounds if i remember correctly so it was very long i was binging i binged the entire series in one go i was just kind of like watching i was locked out locked in because i was tired and i remember that night that day i finished it i slept for an entire 24 hours i remember that day i went to sleep at noon on the couch and i woke up and it was noon the next day. I remember that. Like, oh my goodness. And I remember I was, I I got on my computer and I was out, bro. I was on every illegal website I could find trying to download um, Courts Party, all of them, so I could play them on my channel. And that was when I first played um, the first Courts Party, actually. That was when I first played Corpse Party, like on my channel the first time. I, 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 a year passed and I finally got a chance to play it myself. I had forgotten almost everything from Berlizzi's playthrough and I just kind of, I just hopped on, you feel me? So let's get some music in here actually. I played it for the first time ever and I didn't really remember much of it from Berlizzi. All I remembered was that I really loved it, you feel me? And after beating Court's party, I remember, I, I don't remember if I cried at the end of it, but I know I was holding back tears. But I was so hyped, man. But um, it became my favorite video game ever. I've played a lot of great games. Court's party became my favorite of all time. Um, and um, what it is, I did purchase the game actually. I think after I beat the game, I went on and bought it. Cause I was like, I can't do my people like that. You can't, you can't just come, you can't just create my favorite game of all time and then get no money from me over it. You feel me? Like, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do like, I couldn't do them like that. But, um, after that, I played Book of Shadows with Sunny. That was such a great experience, man. A lot of people, a lot of people don't like Book of Shadows from my knowledge, but man, that game was fun and it was fun playing with him too. Like. It was a it was a silly game. It had some of the best wrong ends ever. I'm not gonna lie, it had some of the best wrong ends. And the way it expanded on the story and gave us more insight on the characters was off it was awesome. And that was the game that made Sachiko one of my favorite characters. Honestly. You know, it started off as a joke, you know, like she's completely evil, but I'm gonna just call her my pure sweet daughter. But truthfully, like she gradually did just become a character that I really loved, you know? And then, um, before I played Blood Drive, I actually watched Corey Kenshin play Quartz Party for the first time. I'm, as much as I used to love watching Corey Kenshin, like, I was one of the first people to, to watch the Al Oni series. I was on them before Friday Nights at Freddy's type beat. I never watched his Quartz Party series, bro. Dog, Corey, if you're looking, if, if, if you're seeing this, I hate you, dog. Like, I hate you. <laughs> I hate this dude, Corey, bro. Because his Corpse Party series was so frustrating. Like, he was so stupid the whole game, bro. Like, it was it was so frustrating to watch because I know everything on what to do. And he's just so stupid and complaining and calling. And, and like, oh my goodness, bro. It was so annoying. And then when he like, when he started getting on the character's heads for stuff, that was already explained. I'm sitting here like, bro, are you even paying attention to the story? Like, oh my, it was so frustrating, bro. But I love Corey so much. I let it slide, I let it slide. I don't wanna see that again though, Corey, if you're watching this, I don't wanna see that again. C Corey ain't watching this. But, um, yeah, bro. I'm, <sighs> Blood Drive, my new favorite game. I like this a lot more than I like the first one. It's just better to me in every way. The only thing I didn't, only thing that's not better than the first course party is the wrong ends and the name tags. Everything else was amazing. I'm kind of disappointed that they didn't have Ray of Hope in here though. That kind of disappointed me. But, you know, nonetheless, nonetheless, it's all cool. 
This game is my favorite game of all time now. The gameplay was just so much more enticing to me. The little running around and stuff, it was a lot more confusing and frustrating. But, you know, that's just course party in general. Um, The new characters, I really enjoyed them. Magari is probably my favorite character to come from this game, if I'm being real. I really like Magari in this game. I really like her. Um, man, there's not really much else to say. Um, thank you to Team Gris Gris, Mages, the people who made this, Xseed. I'm pretty sure they're the publishers. Um, thank you to everybody who had a part in this game. We saw the credits. I let the credits roll for a reason. I let the credits roll because I want to thank y'all for making this. But, um, damn. Of course, we're going to get into the next Course Party. I know Course Party 2 is coming out soon. Um, what it is, Darkness Distortion, and I'm really excited for that. It's going to feature a whole new cast. I know that they have um, what it is. What's that game called? Dead Patient. They say they're still working on that, but I'm not holding my breath on it. But I know they still have that. And I'm, you can expect me to at least play the first chapter of it, you know? But, you know, I played Persona 4, Persona 3, you know, Witch's House, all these other great games with great stories and stuff. Mad Father, these interesting games, these great games with great stories, interesting gameplay and all of that. But for some reason, even if, like, you can say these games are objectively better... Course part will just always stick out to me as my number one. I just want to thank everybody who had a hand in this. Thank you to the voice actors too. Like thank you to the people who drew them, bro. Like thankful, like thank you to the people who like like like, like bro, you could have been somebody who happened to walk past a developer and they was like, wow, I really like their shirt. It kind of uh, I really like their shirt. You know what? I'm gonna have Seiko wear that shirt. Like, thank you to that person. Because anybody who had a hand in anything that came into this game, except for the piss shit. Thank you. Thank you so much. I love this game. Peace out. I love you guys. Tap into the next one. Um, That's the end of Course Party. Blood, Blood Drive. And, well, basically, canonically, the end of Courts Party One, the whole the the, the whole Courts Party with the original cast. That's the end of the story of Kisaragi Academy. Damn, and I was crying like a little bitch earlier too, bro. I know I was crying like a little bitch earlier. I know I was. <laughs> I couldn't help it, bro. I couldn't help it, bro. It was. Let me stop. Let me shut up. Peace out, I love you guys, and if you watch all the way to the end, I really appreciate you. Thank you, I love you, and I really appreciate you. Like, subscribe, read a comment, leave a comment, or read them all, and tap into the next series. Once again, peace out, I love you.